Okay, so here we are. We're at the, the Market Garden here on St. Catherine Street in Vic West. This place is going to absolutely boggle your mind. Uh, I went and looked at it with my friend Christine just this past week. I had to come back. Uh, obviously, we're, we're starting a new episode, Back to Basics. Dude, the menu this weekend, killer good. We're actually going to do a trio of macaroni and cheese. We're going to have some fun, so I invite you. Come check out the Market Garden with me. We'll take some shots inside and show you what kind of spectacular stuff they've got going on. So come on in and away we go. Okay, back in the kitchen. Hope you guys enjoyed the marketplace. That place is absolutely amazing. A amazing. There's n absolutely nothing like it here in Victoria. So it's it's a really kind of one of those special spots, right? Reminds me of kind of Italy that's in New York. Um, there's I know that there's one in Toronto. So so yeah, just a, a really neat spot. Lots of lots of really cool things that you typically don't see. So so yeah, that's where I ended up going to get some of the provisions for our trio of macaroni and cheese. So so that's going to be fun. Okay, uh, we're going to do a kimchi mac and cheese. We're going to do a roasted cauliflower mac and cheese, and just good old fashioned straight up mac and cheese. So good. Okay, so that's the that's the agenda for today. What we're going to get started on right now, and that's going to end up being one of our toppers, is going to be cornbread. Okay? Jalapenos, so good. Okay? White cheddar, awesome. And we're going to, we're going to bake it. The oven's already preheated to 400. I've already started working on my, my dry ingredients. So one cup all-purpose flour, one cup cornmeal, two-thirds cup of sugar, Three and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Nailed it, yes. Because my phone's actually filming and that's where I have the recipe on it, so I, I hope I got it right. I hope I didn't screw you guys over, but whatever. Okay, all dry ingredients go in the bowl. Give it a nice stir. Get everything incorporated. There we go. We've got wet ingredients. One cup of milk. We've got one third of a cup of just regular canola oil, vegetable oil, whatever you have. We've got Johnny Egg. Fire the egg in there. Okay, let's give that just a quick whisk. Put it all together. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna take about two thirds of a cup of aged white cheddar. You can use whatever cheese that you want, whatever other ingredients you want. We made one a few weeks ago, uh, and we we use chives and some other cheese. Whatever. Can't, can't really remember. So about two thirds of a cup. I probably got too much on my plate, which is fine. The dogs will probably eat the rest as they typically do. So two thirds, that's gonna be close enough. I hope we've got our wet ingredients. Next is gonna be our, our jalapeno. So just gonna use half of a fresh jalapeno. I don't think we really need a whole one. So typically most people are gonna be using jalapenos that are coming out of the jar. Okay, marinated, pickled, whatever, whatever it is, smoking hot. So in here, the hot is gonna be in the seed and in the pith. So that's what we wanna remove, okay? So all this white, all these seeds, I'm just gonna take a knife and go all the way around and I'll give you a quick show on this one. Okay, just go all the way around, knife inside. And you'll see most of that'll come out in one foul swoop. Get the seeds out, super important. 
Okay, get these seeds out of the way. Next, bigger knife, use the proper knife for the proper job. I'm just gonna cut it lengthwise, okay? Then I'm gonna run my knife and get rid of the rest of the pith, the rest of this white that's on here. Give that a quick zip off. Okay, do it on both. So then what I'm gonna wanna do is a really nice brunoise, small, small dice. We don't want big chunks in our cornbread. We're just looking for more of that flavor. It's not, the cornbread's not gonna be hot. It's just gonna taste like jalapeno. So, which is gonna be super good, okay? So we're gonna run, around, run along, do nice long strips. Okay, we turn it back the other way. Go against the grain, get a nice green was. So funny, funny restaurant stories. All of you male chefs out there are gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. Wash, wash your hands, yeah? When you're done this, wash your hands. It is an absolute must. You male chefs that have been in this business long enough, you know, mid-service, like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I have to pee. I, I have to pee, right? Chef, I'll be right back, offline, gotta go to the can. You didn't wash your hands. Now your hands are full of pepper. You go downstairs, right? Toilet, do your thing. Then you wash your hands, you're coming back upstairs, things on fire. Black pepper, white pepper, hot. Now you're back online dancing even more. It's terrible. <laughs> wash your hands before you touch stuff. Super important, we've all been there. Actually, here's the thing. For all the chefs that are watching this that have been through that, throw a comment in. Let's have a, let's have a chat about, about how hot things get when they're not used to getting that hot. Let's finish this thing off and get this thing in the oven. Anyway, funny kitchen stuff, right? Things that people never ever think about. Sitting there having dinner, having my steak, isn't this nice? There's Johnny in the back. Oh my God, it's so hot. Okay. Okay, now we got a nice brunoise. Fire that into our dry ingredients. Oh man, I can't wait to have this. Super, super good. Okay, wet ingredients. Fire that in. Okay, just whisk it around. You can be fairly aggressive with this. We're not doing a whole lot to it. We're not gonna be developing really much of any gluten. Okay, but we want to incorporate it so we're not getting those flour bits. Does its thing. I always feel like cornbread's understated. Nobody really puts it on their menu anymore. I actually had it on the menu at the end for a little while. Did it with grits, did some Southern cooking. So good, went from you know a fine dining restaurant, revamped the menu, bistro, right? With a bit of a Southern Louisiana flair, right? The French, the French part of Louisiana. Okay, cornbread, super good. Okay, nicely incorporated. Got our bake sheet, our bake pan here. I've already greased it, bit of butter, hit it with some, some flour, dust it all up, knock out the excess, rubber spatula, fire it in. Just get it into the corners. It is, it is still somewhat wet, right? So whatever, not a big deal. Fire them in the corners. Put your fingers in there, it's not gonna hurt anything. No big deal. Okay, next thing, just to make sure that there's no air pockets. Just give it a little pounding. Dogs hate it, they're coming running right now. Cornbread, super straightforward. It's gonna go into the oven, 400 degrees, preheated, 20, 25 minutes. Cornbread, I said 20, 25 minutes, 400. 20 minutes, bang on, okay? The best way to tell how it's done, go to trust your little toothpick. I'm sure everybody knows the toothpick test. Fire it there down in the middle. If it comes out nice and dry, which it is, game on. So this is just now gonna sit, it's gonna rest, let it decrease in temperature. 
later on what we're going to do, and I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, we're going to cut it up, we're going to dry it out, we're going to turn that into breadcrumbs, and that's going on top of our macaroni and cheese today. So something a little bit different. Bechamel time, that's what we're doing. So I've got a bunch of milk already on the stove, starting to warm up. I've already started melting a little bit of butter to make our roux. Okay, so I just want to kind of walk you through what those steps are and what that looks like. We've talked about this before. We made the chicken pot pie, making the velouté. I was saying about making a white roux. So equal parts, butter and flour. We're going to incorporate them quite quickly together. We're not going to allow it to get any color. And then we're going to start adding our milk into that in stages, third at a time. Okay. The one, one trick one for this is what's called a spiked onion. Okay. So it's just onion, raw onion, and we're gonna hammer some cloves into it. As you can see, I've already started. I'm gonna put a couple more in. We don't really need much more than six. So six are in here. These cloves are good. We're gonna look for just a little bit more punch. So there's the next one. So what we're gonna do is, as once we've incorporated all of our milk, we've been vigorously, vigorously, vigorously stirring and stirring and stirring, we're just gonna drop this in. In the other episode, we had a chopped onion. Incorporating it that way, we're doing a saute getting it translucent. This we're just gonna fire in, it's gonna sit there, we're gonna get, pull out some of that onion flavor, and we're certainly gonna get some of those cloves. But we don't want it too, too intense. All right, so as I said, our, our milk over here is already hot. I know I'm, I'm filming by myself, so it might be a little bit tricky, but I'm gonna do the best I can. I got some new gadgets and stuff, so we'll see if it works out. Our butter is already warm. As you can see, it's nicely melted. Now we're gonna start adding in some of our flour. And again, this is where we're gonna be making our, our roux. Let's just fire that in, get some going. And this one's gonna be a white roux. So again, vigorous, vigorous, vigorous. Pull everything together. Okay, a little sloppy, so we're gonna want some more, some more flour. I want it to look somewhat dry in here. And when you're making macaroni and cheese and things on those lines, you can do there's a multitude of different ways to be able to incorporate the thickening agent and do cornstarch. There's, there's different things you can do. Bit of a traditionalist over here, so I like to take the time and, and build all that flavor, get all that butter, and that's where a lot of the flavor's coming in. Okay, so nicely coming together. See there. That's gonna be pretty much right what we're gonna need. So we're just gonna cook this out just for about a minute. We don't want it to change color. There we go. Right, still looks fairly white. Okay, get everything back in the pot. And this is the time that we're gonna switch over and go to our wire whisk. So, got our ladle. Pot's a little bit too heavy to really pour a full third in. Eh, let's give it a go, see what happens. Nice sound, so roughly a third. Again, hot into hot. It's gonna incorporate significantly easier and smoother. We wanna be vigorous with our whisking. We don't want those flour lumps in here. You can see the way how quickly it tightens right up, making it a little bit difficult. This is the time to really put that effort in and get those lumps out. Okay, let's turn our heat back down. Let's add in that other third. Okay, again, making sure that we're lump free. Nothing worse than biting into a chunk of flour and butter. Pull up right up against, right out the pot. Maybe a little too vigorous. Okay. Already starting to come together. Oh, you can see it. It's already coming together. It's already happening. Looks wonderful. Making a mess. That's okay. Let's get everybody in. Don't be shy. Get right in there. Add in our other third. There we go. It's come together quite quickly. See, I'm making a fair amount. 
So for the ones that are actually going to stick around and watch this, and watch everything coming together. I got a little surprise for you later, but you got to watch the show. There we go. See, it's not coming, it's not as thick as it was, meaning our portions are actually pretty close, which is nice. Okay, because we still want that creamy, feel to it, our macaroni, right? We want to be able to lift it out and see it work. There we go. Again, no different than making our velouté. We're going to cook this out at a lower, lower temperature, roughly for about 40, 45 minutes. We're going to try and get the, the flavor of flour out of it. So now I've got my spiked onion. And we're just going to fire that spiked onion right in. It's going to look great. Okay. And it goes. We're going to get some of that flavor in there. Again, let it go 40, 45 minutes is ideal without question. Let it sit. It's just going to hang out. Now we're going to go ahead and roast off our cauliflower. Again, preheated oven, 400 degrees. Just roast it. We want to caramelize that sugar that I keep talking about that's in, in all, all food. Okay, so I've just done some really nice, small, definitely bite-sized florets. I feel as though that cauliflower is super underrated and not used very often. Eating it raw, really not that much fun. It's always the last vegetable in a crudite platter, right? So for guys like me that eat more than we probably should, I'm, I'm the guy left with the cauliflower at the end with the crudite, lame. Okay, um, but it is super versatile. There's so much that can be done with it. So I'm gonna keep this clean, simple. It's not complicated. Really two ingredients. We'll hit it with some salt and pepper later on. So let's just keep it to two. Cauliflower, extra virgin olive oil. If you notice, I didn't show you the bottle of extra virgin olive oil that I'm using. Okay, because I don't want you to know where I got it from. It might be just from the grocery store, even though there's some amazing, amazing olive oils out there. Uh, it's the one thing that I did forget to pick up today. I knew I had some in here and I didn't think I'd be so brutally honest with you guys as I have been for all the episodes so far. Just a nice light coating. Okay, toss that around. If you can't toss popcorn, don't try, okay? Maybe practice if you want, but it's just like popcorn, okay? Super straightforward. Onto a flat sheet pan, parchment paper, Spread it out nice and even. Even caramelization on this, an even roast. Again, nice hot oven, 400 degrees. It's going in, how long is it gonna take? It'll take as long as it needs once it comes out of the oven. That's when it's done. So timing on that one, this is one of the things that pisses people off when, when I'm trying to give them advice or they ask questions better yet. How long is it gonna take in the oven? I don't know, but you're, but you're a chef. You, you do know. No, I just, I just inherently know when it's coming out of the oven. So let me, I'll, I'll throw something out there. We'll see how it goes. Let's say, you know, 22 and a half minutes. Does that satisfy your, your need to know how long it's going to take? Maybe it does. We'll find out. Bechamel. Awesome. I'm not going to show you the mess that I made because it's, uh, it's a little bit ridiculous, but that's okay. So classic bechamel. Okay. All the, all the last thing that's needed is, is a bit of salt and preferably white pepper, but uh, I don't have any. I'm now gonna make a secondary sauce called a Mornay. So it's bechamel, cheese, way too much cheese, but that's, but that's why we're here and that's what we're doing. So I'm gonna add in my cheese. There's still a little bit of residual heat. I have it on really low. That way I don't wanna scald and, and burn and, and I have a giant mess that I've gotta clean up. So we'll just start folding that in. Melt all that cheese, all that loveliness. It's going to be super sticky. All the fat, all the goodness. COVID-25, here we come. Okay, so a little bit more heat. Now's the time to season. It's going to require a fair amount. I did make almost four liters. This is going to end up being closer to six by the time 
everything's all said and done. So we're just going to mix that in. You can see the cheese starting to melt in, turning that beautiful color. If it ends up being a little bit too thick, not a big deal, fire some more milk in there. But this is kind of what I'm looking for. I really want that mac and cheese to be sticky and gooey and yummy when it comes out of the oven. There we go. Sauce morning. Morning, bechamel cheese, done, ready to go. I blanched off a ton of noodles, probably way too much. Um, but that's but that that works just fine. Just gonna have too much. There's never too much of a good thing they say. Something along those lines. Anyway, so cauliflower, okay, nicely roasted, looking beautiful. So really, it was actually closer to 40 minutes. Uh, so the 22 and a half, way off. Okay, big big thumbs down on that one. Okay, so I got uh, some noodles, cauliflower. Let's put everybody in the drink. Okay, get to our seasoning here in a minute. We've got our sauce. Let's ladle some on. Okay, give that a toss around. Get everybody in. Throw a fair amount of seasoning in here. It's gonna need it. And the smell of that cauliflower is something else. Nice and crispy. Golden brown. Just the, just the sound of mixing macaroni. Man, oh man, you can just already drooling a little bit, right? Gets the saliva glands going. And if we want enough sauce in here to bring everybody together, okay, let's throw in a little bit more, a little extra salsa. Worry about the mess. Somebody else will clean it up. I'll come over and clean it up. What the hell? I'm doing enough of my own cleanup here. So, as I was telling you, I had our dishwasher malfunction this year. No good. Get the new dishwasher, super stoked. Yes, we ran it once and the thing broke. So I've been doing dishes three times the amount that you guys have actually been watching. Giant mess. Anyway, guys coming out Monday. It better be fixed on Monday. I'm not gonna be a happy guy, eh? Anyway, not a big deal. Here we are, there is our cauliflower, mac and cheese, all dolled up. We'll put that into a container in a little problem. Okay, there we are. There is that one. Next, kimchi, mac and cheese. Keep it simple, go out and buy some kimchi. We're at, we were at the market this morning, super great spot. So a little shout out uh, to Haas Sausage and Co. Right, should we get, haven't even tried it yet. I'm afraid to try it because I don't want to rip my face off while I'm talking to you guys. Uh, might, might be fun, hard to say. Could be entertaining for you guys. Oh my god, smells good. Smells hot. So I'm just going to put some down on my cutting board here. I'm just going to give it a quick blast with the knife. Quick, quick chop chop. Okay, you guys are probably saying, hey, try it. Let's see how hot it is. Oh my god. Hmm. Yum, 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 yum. Definitely not crazy hot, but it's starting to show up a little bit. A little, taking this little time, get the taste buds ripping around a little bit. So quick rough chop. Just don't want it to bite into huge chunks of cabbage. I want that flavor to go all the way through. I think we can put a little bit more in. I do like it a little bit spicy around here sometimes. That's most of that bottle. Zoink, remember, <laughs> wash your hands. Touch them hot, stop, wash your hands. Should be washing your hands right now anyway, with pandemic going on. Everybody in the drink. Here we are. Quick little wipe down. I'm not gonna need any pepper, I don't think. So I'll throw in a whack of salt. I'm thinking, how many people are coming over for dinner? Now it's how many dinners can I put in the freezer? That's the question. Or we stick around for a little while. Maybe there's a little giveaway at the end of the show. Uh, so for the ones that are going to stick around, 
stick stick around. It might be worth your while. Okay, again, throw let's throw in some of that Mornay sauce. Dude, this stuff is legit. It's so nice. Oh, we'll take the same spatula, not a big deal. Okay, give that a good stir. This is gonna be crazy. This is gonna be crazy good. I'm so excited about this. It's been it's been super refreshing. So I spend most of my weekends now in the in the kitchen. Kara, Kara bounces out. You know, we, we do obviously do our chores and all of our errands and, and all that kind of stuff. But she she usually bounces out on the weekends and go hang, hangs out with her friends and stuff, which is awesome. I've been finding this time in the kitchen just to be un, unbelievable, right? So back back to basics, finding some spirit again, getting re-energized into something that I've done for such a long time, but have been away from for a number of years. So really super cool, super fun. You know, watching stuff in the comments coming through online, I mean, amazing. And again, having people reach out that I haven't talked to in way too long. Okay, but that is the power of social media, which is which is good. It allows us to to stay connected somewhat. A little spoon. I'm gonna check this out. See how we are for seasoning. Oh my god. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Oh, look, look, get that in the back and throw that. A little bit more salt, just bring out a little bit more heat. So good. Okay, so I'm gonna finish making my mess over here. You don't need to watch that part. I'm gonna get these into little containers, get them ready to go. When we come back, we're gonna start making some breadcrumbs out of the, the, corn, the cornbread, right? The cornbread, something else that we got going on. Okay, stick around, see you in a sec. Cornbread. Took my paring knife, just ran it around the edges, fell right out onto my board. It's, it's, it's perfect. So I haven't even tried it yet. Just busy making some, some cuts here. So I'm, I'm gonna try it with you guys. Oh my God. So it's cooked perfect. It's still a little bit moist. A little bit of sweet, lots of savory, you can taste the cheese. Jalapenos are starting to, to show up a little bit. It's awesome. So again, we're gonna use this as our topper for our macaroni and cheese. I made way too much. I was thinking I was in some professional kitchen and just making vats of this stuff out. Huh? So anyway, stick around for that one. So baking sheet lined with parchment paper, oven, oven's on, 400 degrees. We're essentially what we're doing, we're just gonna toast this and we're gonna utilize this for breadcrumbs. So we're either gonna mash it up in our hands, which is going to take a little, a little bit of time. Uh, if you've got a food processor, rock that. We just discovered that we've got this tiny little one that's going to take like six hours to do breadcrumbs for crying out loud. So again, just lay them out beautifully onto our bake sheet. Yes, this does look like a lot. I did make a lot, but I'm going to enjoy it a lot. Can't enjoy your own cooking, what can you enjoy, right? Look at that. Look at it. It's just, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. Okay, so I may have to do a couple of batches of this, which is totally fine. A little bit of olive oil, even though there's a, enough oil and, and stuff in there, it would toast up just nicely, but I'm just going to hit it with just a little bit of extra flavor. Just a, a just a lightest sprinkle right on top. Yeah, right into the oven, toast it up. We'll cool them down. Okay, here's the challenge. Okay. I want a comment, Mad Mac, M-A-D-M-A-C, it's mad in here, right? Uh, my, my alternate personality is Mac, okay? McMillan's Mac, you get it, okay? And you've gotta share it. So three things for the first six people, as long as you live within my area, not in Ontario or the Caymans or wherever, I'm gonna hand deliver these to your house. So it's gotta be within Victoria, okay? So top six, three things to do. Like, love, whatever whatever you want, the little emoji guys in there, give her a click. Mad Mac, in the comments, spell it however you want, makes no difference to me, and share. Let's do this. Thank you for joining me again. Episode five has been far too much fun. Stay safe, love you all. All right, here we are, this is it. I'm gonna, I think in the next one, I'm gonna have you guys watch me clean up the mess. No, I'll probably actually lose followers.
which I don't, I, I don't want to do. I love all of you guys. This is, this has been, this is far too much fun for me right now. I'm really truly enjoying this. So mac and cheese. I figure I have enough to feed almost 20 people. Right? Why? 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 Anyway, let's get back to the cornbread. Let's finish this thing off. So as I said in the oven, it was probably 20 minutes to toast them up nicely. I said I was going to use a little food processor. It's too small, so I just use my hands. It's it's rustic food. We're not we're not serving this in a restaurant. I guarantee you, it tastes like restaurant food for sure because it's awesome. Uh, I may have had a couple small portions myself, but I'm not sure. Uh, nothing that I'm going to admit to in public anyway. Oops. Okay, so I'm just going to finish off the last couple little individual portions here. This is the first time you've seen this, so maybe some of you are asking, this, the some of you that are actually left and watching the whole thing, why, why is there individual portions and why are you trying to feed so many people? Well, we do Sunday night dinner, like I've said before. So we're gonna have we're gonna have some for family dinner, some's gonna go in the freezer. But really what's gonna happen here, and this is why I've asked some of you to tune in for a while now, is I've got Six, six extra individual portions left. So here's the challenge. The first six that like the post, they share the post, as well comment on my post. That is what, Kara? Chef Mac, what is it? Can you stop it? I was hoping you were going to bail.